Okay. Hello, this is Dr. Jaynes, and today I'm going to talk, uh, this is going to be part two of the tritium nuclear fusion experiment. And um, what I wanted to do is uh, just kind of explore the, the plasma properties, take some measurements of that. Let's take a look at this. And uh, one of the important parameters, because I wanted to kind of do some calculations to see if I expect to see neutrons, or how many neutrons I would expect to see approximately, whether we think we're going to get fusion energy or not. And uh, what we're doing here is uh, I just hooked up one of the wires. Well, one of the wires is not hooked up. And uh, there's a characteristic length that you can measure in a plasma called the Debye length. And uh, you can kind of see... Let me let me decrease the power a little bit so it's easier to see. So the uh, plasma extends a certain length when you excite it. So it's, it's I would say it's probably about a couple centimeters, okay? And uh, that length tells you how far the uh, the plasma basically is self shielded. And uh, it, it can you can use equations to determine what the collision length is because the idea is is that if you're running a, a, you know atoms accelerating atoms in this high voltage field and they don't travel very far before they hit something they're going to lose their energy and so even if I'm putting like 10,000 volts on there which is fusion energy and they're colliding a whole lot like an atmosphere they'd be colliding uh, too much and it would never reach fusion energy it, the, the, the collision length would be like you know uh, micrometers or something and so you would divide the voltage by the uh, or you take the length that you're adding the voltage across divide it by the collision length and that's how much the voltage is divided down basically and so that would be no good we wouldn't get fusion but it looks like we're getting a reasonable fusion length so we'd like to calculate what we think the density, the number density is, and uh, of course the uh, collision length is going to be dependent on uh, temperature and other things. And so here's our notebook. And uh, let's take a look at this. So anyway, our estimate of we take all the tubes and estimate their size, and then uh, the diameter got to approximate the inside diameter, take the half-life of tritium, and on the tube it says it is 20 curies, and we can turn that into disintegrations per minute, and uh, use these equations to estimate the number density of tritium, and uh, There's our first estimate of the pressure. So that would be what, one one hundredth of an atmosphere, or about 16.5 torr. Okay, and those are the beta energies. Remember, it's got nuclear decay by beta emission. So we have our mean free path, lambda, is equal to uh, the constant R times temperature. That's the Boltzmann constant. Uh, square root of 2, pi d is the area, uh, number density, and I believe that's pressure, and uh, getting some estimates. So our estimates are actually very short lengths. These are in meters, so, but these are approximate. Well, they could have a large error in them because there's a large uncertainty in some of the things I was looking at. And uh, so what I wanted to do is try to estimate it. Uh, let's get this page over here. Okay, so yeah, I did try it with a magnetron, and uh, if you study plasma physics, the RF, uh, uh, if you look at the passion curve for uh, RF frequencies, it becomes shorter, and so it's actually harder to break down a plasma at really high frequencies like uh, 2.5 gigahertz that the cooker magnetrons operate at. So I was not able to excite it with that, but I was able to excite it with Tesla coils, and they were at a higher frequency. And um, 
I was doing some experiments. Tritium does not break down in the gigahertz. Okay. And here's some equations for uh, pressure uh, plasma parameters. Okay. I'm driving some more plasma equations. And uh, trying to estimate what we think that the uh, plasma parameters are of this device, this tube. We'd like to characterize it a little bit. Okay. Number density equation here. And uh, <coughs> let's take a look here. So I ended up building a Rogowski coil, which is a coil that measures the, the axial current traveling down here like that. And it's basically a bunch of uh, windings that go around in a loop around the uh, tube. And I was putting it around the tube and sliding it up and down to try to measure, because you could, you could see that the plasma was extending out a certain distance, but you couldn't really, you know, is, is the optical uh, density that you're seeing related to the plasma density? So here's a measurement. So here are some plots, uh, distance versus uh, uh, the, uh, the current that I'm measuring. And you can see it decays off, and this is in centimeters at the bottom. And so there is a characteristic length here of about uh, a centimeter or so. That's, that's when the plasma uh, density drops to about half, <coughs> or the, pl the ionized plasma. And so we can do some calculations based on uh, the, the Debye length here and estimate what we think the uh, collision frequency is going to be for the collision length. And I believe that's what we did over here. Okay, one thing to also keep in mind, yeah, so these are more reasonable lengths. Um, for These are uh, the, the Debye length. And it also depends on the power that you stick into the plasma, because the, the more ionized the plasma is, the, the collision length will change. And so you can reach fusion energy possibly also by putting so you, you can actually reach fusion energy by adding more and more power to it because the, uh, the uh, collision length will get longer and longer as you add more and more power. You can see the Debye length is changing here. And so we can calculate what we think the, we can estimate what, it, what we think the electron temperature is. And these parameters can be off because these are estimates, but uh, we can get some idea of what the properties of this tube are so we can determine whether we think we're going to get fusion. And so in the next one, the next uh, episode, I, I'm going to get out my uh, fast neutron detector and we'll see if we get neutrons off of this tube. I get, uh, have to get that one set up. It's in storage right now. So anyway, if that uh, estimate of the Debye length is uh, correct and these other assumptions about the energy are also correct, then uh, we're looking at a number density that is significantly lower than atmospheric pressure. And so then I would expect that um, <coughs> the ions should be able to reach pretty much full energy before they collide with something. And so we should get fusion in uh, the system. So anyway, estimate of plasma frequency based on these uh, parameters. And of course, you know, the, the temperature of the electrons is going to change depending on what kind of energy you stick into it. And that's kind of a guess right there, so this could be off by, by some amount. <coughs> but it seems like the plasma, typically, uh, <coughs> you know, if you have a Debye length of a certain length, then it's going to have fairly few co collisions in a length that's uh, a little bit smaller than that. And so uh, I think we might be able to get some fusion energy out of these tubes. 
Anyway, this is Dr. Jaynes, and thanks for watching.